Welcome. We are live. Welcome. Thursday Night Stock Charts Live. Another Thursday and another grift. So this week was action-packed with economic data. We knew it going into the new trading week. And it's definitely a two-sided week. But today, really, it took the cake in terms of gaslighting. And I don't think I've ever used that phrase before, gaslighting of the investor with the producer price index that we had released this morning. So we're going to walk through this. We're going to walk through how the media portrayed it. I have a great article which just gives you a matter of fact. Oh, it's not a big deal. Uh, PPI, yeah, it was hot, but uh, it was less than expected. Not a big deal. Don't worry about it. So let's begin with a with a recap of the data that was released this week. We started with NFIB small business optimism. That came in with a miss. Consumer price index blew the doors off of expectations. In fact, a lot of these banks... They had it pretty right, to be honest with you. You had um, Barclays. They nailed it. Bank of America. Most of these guys nailed it. Citigroup was a little bit on the over. Uh, Barclays and uh, Deutsche, all these guys got the, the headline number and the, uh, the core number pretty much accurate so maybe a little bit higher on their estimates so we had a hot number yesterday the equity market sold off it was a one-sided day to the downside all day long then today we get the producer price index that came out now i i did a market wrap last night and I said, be careful. I think what they're going to do is the exact opposite of what they did last month. Last month, CPI came in cool and the markets rallied. Then PPI came out, came in hot, and then it declined. So I said, I bet you that's what they're going to do this month. Sure enough, what did they do? CPI hot, PPI came in Excuse me, CPI hot, PPI so-called cool. So we had initial jobless claims. That came in a little bit lighter as well. And tomorrow we're going to get import prices. This is an inflation number that many people don't pay attention to, but you should because we don't manufacture as much as we used to. We import a lot. So if import prices go up, well, then that's a problem for the overall market. Uh, we also get at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to get consumer sentiment. Don't forget, 10 a.m., a lot of people forget about that 10 a.m. report, and they put on positions, and they get hurt because they didn't expect that report to get announced. Everybody looks at 8.30, all the news is out, and then they do their trading. Be careful. Let's say hello to folks. Franklin. Hey, brother. Welcome. Mr. Pete. Welcome, sir. Okay, so how did the markets respond today to the cooler than expected <laughs> CPI report? Uh, I got to tell you, I, I was I was I was shocked that it that it rallied this hard. I I I I, I thought we might get a rally. I didn't think we were going to rally. What one point six percent on the day? Yeah. Now there's a problem. Volume was just above average, which is good, but you would expect more volume than that on a move of 1.6%. Plus, we not only were up on the day, we burst through several resistance levels without looking back. So I think what we're going to do here is we're probably going to do a retrace, maybe not tomorrow, maybe early next week, back down to 440. Now, I have, I've sold uh, a call spread, which is a short bet against the Q's strike price up at 450. I'm going to keep that on because it's going to require the triple Q's to break out to new all-time highs. 
for it to get tested. So I'm going to keep that trade on for now. Uh, so what did the S&P 500 do? Well, it rallied three quarters of a percent. It looks like it's in a bull flag setup and it wants to break out. There's a problem here. Momentum, stochastics are declining. Same deal on Qs. They're beginning to hook up, but will we get another lower high like we saw here, here, here? We don't know. We're going to go over the weekly charts in a moment to see how we may close out the week. Now, the Fed's balance sheet, that gets released every Thursday without fail. But this week, something changed. Pretty much unchanged. This is about as close as you're going to get. 7,438,000,000. Yeah, this is unch. We're making the call. Unch. Uh, PE multiple. This is the trailing multiple. 54 spot two. You're seeing this because I'm doing all sorts of masonry work in front of my house. So equities are very, very expensive. Now, here's what they don't want you looking at. So we'll, I'm going to take you back to January. In January, seems like a long time ago now, right? January, they were betting that we were going to get a March cut. Didn't happen. Uh, May is, there's no doubt about, we're not going to get a cut. June was a foregone conclusion as well. That was at 100% at one point. Now, as of yesterday, it's only 23 spot 4%. Let me put this into context. Last week, there was an expectation of no change of 34 spot 2%. So that's roughly what a 66% probability of a cut because they're not going to raise rates of a cut. Fast forward to this week. In one week, the probability of a 66% cut has now dropped down to 24%. So pretty much non-existent. Yet equities rallied today. They're not getting their rate cut. Here's what I think they're doing. Remember, we started this off by saying, I think what they're doing is they, they're, they're playing shenanigans with the inflation data. One report good, the other one bad. They'll invert it next month, and they'll just keep the market still waiting, looking at that potential for a ease. And the markets will just keep moving higher until they call BS and say, you know, we know you're full. You know what? So I think what they're going to do is they're going to try to keep this number for July at or around 50% as long as possible. You're not going to get a cut in July unless, of course, the economy goes like this. If the economy rolls over, different story. But right now, supposedly we have a 3.4% GDP fueled because we have a government that is out of control with their spending. That being said, we still have a 3.4% GDP with inflation Ripping through the ceiling. They're not cutting rates. It's not going to happen. Maybe we'll get one this year. And the, if we do get a cut, I think it's going to happen here. I'm betting December. If it's a presidential election year, if they want to goose the stock market, try to improve polls, they'll cut in September to prime the markets for a Election Day. Now, the problem is, is that if they cut in September, we know from historical patterns that that first cut is usually a top in the stock market. That's why I'm leaning towards December for us getting a cut. That does not bode well for early 2025. Can you believe we're talking about 2025 already? i to take a sip. So how did the media report this? Report on today's PPI. What caused 
the stock market to rally as it did on data that was still inflationary. Well, let's take a look. This is off of Market Watch. My jaw dropped when I read it. Okay, so here we have wholesale inflation, big picture. PPI not showing intensifying price pressures. Okay, sure. The producer price index is more volatile than a similar survey of consumer prices, but it's not pointing to broad acceleration in U.S. inflation. We're going to go to that in a moment. To be sure, the PPI has moved up higher in early 2024. Okay, yeah, we know that. The yearly rate of wholesale inflation climbed high of 2.1% in March. Yet he's dismissing the rise in inflation up here. He's just dismissed what he just said up here. That it does not point to a broad acceleration in prices. That's false. Some increase has been driven by some increase has been driven by higher gas prices through in March. They have a typo there. Wholesale energy prices fell sharply to offer some relief. Is this guy out of his mind? Is he out of his mind? Yet, yet, if food and gas are set aside, why would you set it aside? What are you, the Federal Reserve? Why would you set food and energy or gas aside? Producer prices only rose a scant 0.1% 0 .1, 0 .1 last month. Is this guy nuts? So let's look. Let's look at the inflation picture. Let's play a game. I mean, you know, we, we do these live streams to uh, to talk about inflation, especially on Sunday nights when we go over the commodity markets in great detail. We do these live streams so that we get CPI every single week. We didn't go into yesterday thinking that it was gonna, there was uh, not going to be hot inflation. We knew there was going to be hot inflation. It was a foregone conclusion due to energy prices. So let's take a look. Keep in mind this guy, Jeffrey Bartash, and his matter-of-fact dismissal of the PPI report. I guess he's dismissing CPI as well. Let's take a look. Here, this is price increases over the last decade. And I don't eat this stuff, but a lot of people do. McDonald's, 100%, Popeye's, 86%, Chipotle, 75%. I don't know who the heck eats Taco Bell. 81%. So vastly outpacing the actual rate of inflation since 2014. But Jeff is good. Don't worry about that. Don't look at that. Buy stocks. So I think where we're at at current is where we were, I'm going to go into more charts of inflation in a moment. I think where we're at now is 1975, around that point, just shy of it. So we had a spike in inflation. This goes back to the 1970s. At that time, Arthur Burns, he was Fed chair from 1970 to 1978. Inflation skyrocketed. Why did it skyrocket? As it always does, government spending, guns and butter, Vietnam and welfare spending. What are they doing now? War and welfare spending. It's the same thing over and over again. So big move up higher in inflation, and then inflation rolled over. Why did it roll over? We went into recession. What did Arthur Burns do? He cut rates, but he cut them too much. And what happened? Inflation came roaring back with a vengeance. This is what Powell is afraid of. This is why he's playing games with expectations for a rate cut. He had you thinking it was going to happen in March. It didn't happen. May was a foregone conclusion. Not going to happen. June was a definite foregone conclusion. I would bet you a, a wooden nickel. Not going to happen. July, probably not going to happen. September is now only... Uh, 69%. That's where June was last week. 
don't tell me this is not a grift. If 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 people are falling for this and they're saying, oh no, the Federal Reserve is honest with what they're telling us is that they're going to cut rates soon. Yeah, right. At some point in time, Powell is going to get the message that you need to cut rates because the amount of spending that's going on in Washington, D.C. is it's, it's, it's insane. It's suicidal. And we can't afford $1.2 trillion per year in interest payments. So they're either going to have to cut rates, raise taxes, whatever, because they don't want to cut spending. And this is not Democrat, Republican. It's all of them. It's all of them. The last thing they want to do is cut spending. They'll take it from you. They'll, they'll let inflation run hot. They'll kick the can down the road and let the next guy in Congress worry about it. So back to good old Arthur Burns. So here was the skyrocket. This is probably what we're setting up for when we get that first rate cut in, I think it's probably going to be December. So going back to Jeffrey here. So Jeffrey's of the mind of, ah, it's not a big deal, you know, up 0.1%, not a big deal. So it's over, right? Inflation's over, Jeffrey. Okay, let's see whether or not it's over. Gasoline prices. This is only a daily chart. It was up over three quarters of a percent alone today. This is a bullish key reversal bar. We're going higher. Add to that, let's take a look at gasoline prices on the year. Up nearly 31% on the year. But Jeffrey says, where is it? Some of the increase has been driven by higher gas prices, though March wholesale energy prices fell sharply to offer some relief. What relief is this guy talking about? I have no idea what he's talking about. It certainly wasn't gasoline prices. Let's go to a weekly chart. Where's the respite here? We had one down week in the past several. What's he talking about? Oil. Maybe he means oil. I don't know. Let's give Jeffrey the opportunity to, to maybe he's right. Oh, no, guess what? Oil broke out last week. We haven't had a down week since the week of March the 4th. It's been up, up, up ever since. Let's go to a monthly view. We're up 2.2%. And folks, going back to that weekly view, we broke out last week. This week is a retest. We'll probably bounce around here. Oil is going up. We've spoken about this chart. I guess Jeffrey didn't look at this one. I guess it doesn't matter. This is the CRB Commodities Index. And you may be asking, what is this measure? Okay. Let's let's take a look at it. Let's educate ourselves. All right. So it's a, a, a list of 19 commodities. Aluminum, cocoa, coffee, copper, corn, cotton, crude, gold, home heating oil, lean hogs, live cattle, nat gas, nickel, orange juice, arbob, gasoline. We know that's we already went over that one. And oil, silver, ripping through the ceiling, soybeans, bottoming out, sugar, wheat, bottoming out. So it's 39% energy, 41% agriculture, precious metals 7%, base metals 13 So back to this chart here. We broke out on a weekly time frame. We spoke about this real time. We broke out back here the week of March the 4th, the last down week we saw in oil. And it's been no looking back ever since. So let's say we get a pullback in cocoa prices. Where's my cocoa? <laughs> I had it up here. Where's my cocoa? Here, cocoa, let's bring it up. All right, so here's the continuous contract, futures contract. Coco. Let's go to a monthly chart and you'll get a vibe of what's happening here. This is Coco. 
This is like a once in a lifetime rip your face off rally on cocoa prices. And it is a component of the CRB, certainly helping to lift it as it is also lifting up the DBA, which is an agriculture ETF. Cocoa makes up 8% of this ETF, yet this wants to go up higher. And you may be saying, you know, wait a minute, Bob, if it's making up 8% of the DBA, Cocoa, this chart to me looks pretty, where would Cocoa go? Pretty extended. It's probably going to correct. I would agree with that. I would definitely agree with that. The problem is, is that you have other names now that are beginning to bottom out wheat, corn, soybeans. They have been in a correction. They are now beginning to bottom out, not necessarily go up, but bottom out. Other names in this basket that have no signs of looking back whatsoever, coffee prices. Coffee prices on the month alone, this month alone, not included in the CPI, which is going to come out next month, 12.6%. What else is going up? Copper. Up a month, nearly 7%, also not included in next month's CPI report. Copper is going to hit the headline number. Not just the core number, the headline number, where they back out food and energy. So copper is a major input cost for manufacturing and construction. So this wants to go up. What else is going up? Uranium. This is getting ready for a massive breakout higher. But Jeffrey and the media, the financial news media, they want you to believe that it's all good. Don't worry about it. Buy stocks. Buy stocks. You're good. Federal, Federal Reserve is going to ease soon. Don't worry about it. Why should you be running right now? When you look back at this inflation period here in gray, that was the heyday for gold. Gold peaked out right here in 1980, February 1980, $2,629.96 per ounce. And you may be saying that's wrong. It was 800 bucks. This is adjusted for inflation. And this is why this chart's important. People think that gold has had a rally and it's probably, you know, probably at a top right now. No, it, it's not at a top. It, it, might it be due for a pause and a pullback? Yeah, maybe. But uh, I think that we're easily going to see a doubling of gold prices. Why? We have inflation right now, which is rising and is on par with the inflation that we saw back in the 1970s. Yet gold has yet to break out over the 1980 highs yet. This, if this trend here of inflation continues to rise, CPI, PPI, and tomorrow we get Im import prices, then you're going to be looking at gold prices that are probably going to be set to double because there's a backing away of the dollar as being the reserve currency. It's not an overnight thing. It's going to take a long time to happen. Gold has been around for 5,000 years. And I think that this is getting ready for a major, major breakout. We already own it. So we're good here. Now, gold relative to the S&P 500. Let's go to the year. This is a ratio chart, gold versus S&P 500. Beating the S&P 500 by about 4.5%. And on the month, so far, 6.66% bettering the S&P 500. No breakout yet. This really just goes to show you how much further gold can go up higher, especially when you consider the fact that the equity markets are highly overpriced. So if you get a pullback in equities, and gold continues to press up higher, there's going to be a rip your face off breakout here. And there's not going to be any looking back for quite some time. Because the only reason why gold is ripping up higher is due to the fact that inflation is on a tear. And central banks, they want more gold 
so they're not reliant upon the United States as much as they were. What else is moving up higher? Silver. I mean, I think silver's doing better on the month than gold. Gold on the month up five and a half percent. Silver's up 14 and a third percent. We've been pounding the table on this for a long time now. Game is on. The game is on. Let's go to some comments. Talon. Hey, brother. Michael. Welcome. TZ. Welcome. Uh, Taco Bell trades under Yum or KFC. Yes, sir. You are absolutely correct about that. Uh, why did AFL down so much on no news? AFL. I'm not sure what that is. AFL. Why is my keyboard not working here? AFL. We'll try that again. Oh, Aflac. Right, so this is a financial. It's had a heck of a run. I mean, you really. It looks like profit taking. I mean, you, you take a look at XLF. You know, that's down as well. Uh, they've had a heck of a run. I think it's just profit taking. I wouldn't read too much into it. Very good company. Let's take a look at the weekly charts. Okay, so I want everybody to, to keep in mind that we've 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 covered that the um, the equity markets rallied one point six percent, at least the triple Qs, the S and P five hundred rallied three quarters of a percent. What else is up this week? Yields. Yields are up 4.5%. And not only are they up, we were talking about this consolidation for a very, very long time. And we broke out last week. This week we did a retest. Folks, this is going up. This is going up. This wants to go up. How do I know that? Look at TLT, 20-year bond ETF. This is not my saved chart. Uh, let's go to my saved chart because there's a reason for it. It's not the one I wanted. I added some annotations that I want to use. I shares TLT. Where are you? That's the tips. All right, let's just... Go back. Let me articulate this way. So here was your support level. We broke it yesterday, continuation breakdown today. This wants to go lower. What does that mean for bond yields? They're going up higher. Jamie Dimon of J.P. Morgan was out yesterday talking about an eight-handle, I believe, on the 10-year. Fact check me on that. It better be. It better not be the prime. But uh, he's very, very cautious. So am I a buyer of equities right now? No. No. So what's going on with the U.S. dollar? And this is the only fly in the ointment for – uh, gold right now is that the U.S. dollar is climbing up higher. But to be honest with you, uh, gold and, and the mining stocks are shrugging it off. I mean, this is a major breakout on the U.S. dollar, yet gold and silver are like, eh, who cares? Six months ago, this, would, this breakout on the U.S. dollar would have had gold and silver dropping through the floor. Not anymore. It's a different paradigm that you're looking at right now. Traders know. Traders know what's going on with inflation. Central banks are buying gold. Traders are underweight gold. They need to get positioned in gold. There's only one problem. 
It's a small market. And a lot of people are going to want gold, which is what's going to send it up 100%. Uh, Euro looking like a train wreck relative to the dollar. Yen, same deal here, going lower. They're, they're raising interest rates over there. Inflation is so bad over in Japan. They're raising interest rates, yet the yen can't catch a bit. What does that mean? They're going to have to hike more. What does that mean for traders over there? That's a margin call. They're going to have to dump U.S. equities and repatriate them to bring them back home. They're going to need capital. VIX on the week. We're doing a retest of last week's breakout. We have a weekly breakout. It is still intact despite the fact that we have reversed and we are down on the week. We have one trading day left to go. Dow Transports at current. Beautiful day today. Beautiful day. Reversed off of support. Problem is on, a, on the weekly time frame, we are below support at current. I want to take a quick look at the futures action. I'll do it later on. I'll do it later on. Let's go to the daily chart here. Daily chart, bullish reversal bar, thin volume, nothing to get excited about. Dow Jones Industrial Average still down on the week. Volume light. Let's go to the daily view. The Dow was down today. I didn't even realize that. I primarily look at the S&P 500 and the trip queues. Interesting. S&P 500 weekly view still down on the week. We broke the lower band of support last week. So if we break 510 on the S&P 500, we're going measurably lower. That would be a continuation breakdown. Let's go to the daily view. So we're in a, we'll call it a bull flag setup. And as I always like to say, the test is always at the top. We don't have a double top here yet. Uh, we could easily break out. But as we near all-time highs, the question that becomes, do we break out or do we break down? And if we break down below the lows of this week, well, then there's a new trend and it's down. So you really want to start paying attention to being uh, in, ca in cash or uh, having a bias to the short side rather than the long side if you're going to be in equities. Trip Q's weekly view. This is the reason why I'm keeping my short on. It's because I think that what we have here on this weekly chart is last week, this is in the books. It already happened. It's done. We broke down. This week, we have still in a breakdown. We did not recapture last week's prior support level. It is now acting as resistance. Daily chart. This is a rip your face off sharp covering rally on the day. And what I have noted here, this upper band in blue is Pretty, pretty much approximate as to where that that prior lower band of support now resistances on a weekly chart for the triple Qs. So we, I don't think we're going skyrocketing up higher here tomorrow, next day. I think that they could press it up higher. I'm no genius, certainly no genius. But I think that the close gave us a little inkling as to what might be happening. 30-minute chart, we were very, very overbought intraday and at the close we put in a bearish key reversal bar you saw sellers move in on volume and you saw the same thing happen on the s p 500 now again this does not mean that we can't gap up higher tomorrow the question is do we hold it that's the quick that's the key question technology looks like it's setting up for a continuation breakout to be honest with you one trading day left to go Semis also looks like they're setting up for a continuation breakout. Biotechs, weekly view. 
bullish reversal bar. Weekly Stokes is still weak, so I'm going to avoid this right now. Maybe sell some puts. That's a bullish bet. Consumer staples, not looking good. Under a lot of pressure. Discretionary names up on the week, but they're barely hanging on. Emerging markets, weekly view, strong. I have to say they're strong. Why are they strong in the face of a U.S. dollar? I think that people are seeing value overseas that you're not getting here in the United States. Money is moving into emerging markets. It makes total sense. Energy. We're down on the week at current, and we're down on the day, but what we did on the day is kind of bullish. So here's what I mean. We were down measurably. What did we do? We rallied back to close down on the session, but well off the lows, almost flat. I'm still calling this a bull flag setup. I still think that we could break out on energy. If energy breaks out, that probably means oil is breaking out. And that's going to be a problem for the equity markets. Oil, we already went over this. Natty gas. I have a position in this now. It's a daily chart. Let's go to the weekly view. I think that this is the next commodity to run and run big because AI, I, I've seen several reports out where AI is um, just gobbling up. It's expected to double our energy demand in the next, I don't know, five, 10 years, some crazy number like that. So natural gas has been, it's so plentiful here in the United States. That's why it's so cheap. I think that's coming to a close and you're going to have funds begin to move in, buy up natural gas in anticipation of a demand for natural gas. We covered this, this. Let's spend a moment on mining stocks relative to gold still very very undervalued we own them they're extended on a daily time frame i think any pullback is to be bought beautiful day today and why did they why did they pull back yesterday well inflation was hot why did they rally today well so inflation was cool i don't think so I th while i'm bullish on the gold mining stocks i think they're going up higher i think they're a little bit ahead of themselves right now and you may get a pullback here pretty soon. Silver, we already went over. We own this one. We're up big on this one. Uh, silver miners. Not much is being spoken about the fact that they have broken out as well now. Okay, let's uh, let's do some chart requests, and we will wrap this up. Yeah, Apple. Yeah, uh, Zaki. That's the primary reason of as to why the Qs rallied as they did. I'm glad you brought this up. So here's Apple. Apple is the second largest component of the triple Qs, the first being Microsoft. Apple moved up 4.33% on the day. That's a huge move for Apple. Uh, was there news on Apple? I didn't even look. Was there news there? Let's see how they closed out the session. Pretty extended. Doesn't mean it can't go up higher, but it's pretty extended. Let's go to a 15-minute view. So I think we're going to get a bit of a retrace tomorrow. Look at the volume into the close to the downside on Apple. Let's take a look at Mr. Softy. That was up as well today. And this is why the queues got squeezed as they did. Uh, the question is, you know, with Microsoft, they can break it out. With Apple, it's so beaten up. It's got a lot of overhead supply now. 
I think that you're going to get a lot of pullbacks on any strength on Apple. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I read that. I saw that. But wasn't that a couple of days ago? They stopped. Wasn't it them that stopped their automated car and they were going to look more towards AI, something like that? Uh, the only reason oil is up is because they think Iran is going to start another war. Well, I'm sure that's a part of it, and it's probably the, one of the reasons why gold and the dollar are rallying together. So it's a valid point. But the fact that AI is is taking big bites out of our energy uh, con- uh, production can't be ignored. That, that It's only gobbling up more energy. So I think this is more of a macro theme here. Hello, Bob. Have you heard anything about uranium provider power for AI? And that's the primary reason why uranium is going to move up higher. We went over a chart of uranium earlier here. I still have it up. I mean, this is a weekly chart. This looks like it wants to have a monster breakout here. I'm loving this chart. Here's the monthly view. It took a pause. It looks like it wants to go up higher. So what point does natural gas get a bid? I, nobody wants that. I own it because I'm a contrarian. Let's do some chart requests. Do we have chart requests? We go to the members area. We have Cisco. Cisco Systems. Go to a weekly chart. Cisco weekly chart looking really good here. I think that we're getting ready for a breakout on Cisco. We have not broken out yet. I would wait for that breakout. Uh, If we do break out, you're going to have another resistance level up here at 51 bucks a share. Daily view. A beautiful reversal day on the 9th. We pulled back, held, followed through. I think this is firming up nicely. So I'm getting bullish on Cisco Systems. So much for my mockery. Uh, PSTG, PSTG, PSTG. Pure storage. I don't, I've heard of the company. I don't know the chart. Wow, what a rip this thing's been on, huh? Very, very nice. I just thought of something I wanted to go over really quick. Not gas was down today. And supply in light blue in the lower 48 is now below the five-year average. Yet they knocked natural gas down today, as they did last week on a on a bullish report. So, folks, I think you ought to be looking at natural gas. I want to go back to the chart of um, – we'll go with – UNG. Take a look at the monthly chart of UNG. The stochastics are flatlined. No new monthly low or low yet. Early in the month, I will concede that. Weekly view. Consolidating nicely. We are down now on the week. A little bit of resistance. I think if we break above 16, it's going to be game on on uh, Natty Gas. And the beautiful part about natural gas, it's a very uncorrelated asset. So if if the S&P 500 tanks, natural gas doesn't care. It just it'll do, it's going to do what it wants to do. Highly uncorrelated to pretty much anything. 
Sorry, I digress there. I just remembered that report was out today. I wanted to take a look. So we're going to remain long of natural gas. Back to PSTG. So I see a chart like this. I need to take my crayon out and go, okay, where are we at in terms of upper band of resistance? We pierced it last month, got slapped down. I think you have up until $57.10. Then you're going to get another pullback here. Daily chart. Nice consolidation. I think it breaks out. Again, 57, 58 bucks a share, resistance up there. So be careful with staying long into that resistance level. Bitcoin. So Bitcoin was interesting to me yesterday, and I suspected that equities might rally because it's correlated with the S&P 500. So yesterday, equities were down, yet Bitcoin was up. Today, equities were up, yet Bitcoin, at current anyway, is down. This is probably the after hours. So really, this to me looks bullish. I predicted that we would probably break out back here. I was wrong. We we got knocked down, but we have since rallied back. I think this could still head up higher. The only concern I have with Bitcoin is this. You take a look at, and this is only a daily chart. Look at the Batman ears here. Or some like to call cat ears. RSI is in a downtrend. Yet, we just made new all-time highs only a few days ago. Excuse me, I'm sorry. We made new is it 52 weeks yet? No. new, Close to new monthly highs a few days ago. Take a look at momentum. Momentum is putting in lower highs. That doesn't give me the warm and fuzzies about Bitcoin. But price matters most. So if we get a breakout, in all probability, these are going to reverse and press up higher as well. Let's go to a weekly view. I think odds favor bulls still. You have so many, so many, uh, so much uh, money flow into these ETFs. That's that's the new lifeblood for Bitcoin. UEC. I know the symbol. UEC. Is that a silver miner? Oh, uranium play. Okay. We like E. Higher lows, higher highs. You're going to have resistance up here at around 877 weekly view. Beautiful multi-week consolidation. This is great for a trade. I'd be a buyer here. I would buy it here, sell it here at around 9, 10, 9, 25. This is a rising upper band of resistance, so it's hard to tell exactly where it's going to be if it does break out. But uh, I would watch this rising upper band of resistance at around 9.25. Daily view. I'm a buyer here. Uh, we broke out today. Any retrace, I'd be a buyer of. I think we're going up higher on UEC, very, very bullish on uranium. Anything that has to do with uranium, I'm a buyer of. I like it. Bob, NG still has a little high on storage. Here's the EIA summary today. I still agree with you, though. I, I think that natural gas is, um, yes, is, it, it, are, is there a shortage of natural gas? No. But in terms of uh, in terms of the supply relative to where we were several months ago, it's a lot lower now than what it was. Now we're low, and if you have demand for AI souping up, well, you got to figure that natural gas is going to be in demand as well, because natural gas is the primary fuel along with coal for utilities. 
not really oil. So I think that this rise in uh, in uranium, this rise in nuclear power, it's got to at some point in time have a knock-on effect with natural gas because it's going to take time to bring these power plants online. So even the, even the ones that they've uh, shut down, uh, it's going to take a while for them to, to, to get brought online, and especially to build ones. So I think natural gas is going to be it's going to be a long term play, but I'm sticking with it for right now. What else do we have? Thanks for the comment. Uh, working gas storage. Thanks, Denny. Yeah, but okay, so I see what you're saying. But what's the trend? Here is the five year average, right? Of storage. It's rising, yet the actual is declining, maybe flattening out a little bit, but there's been a crossover where you have the five year average is now above the current supply. And that's what I'm looking at. That's what makes me bullish. Not necessarily, a, this is reported every single week. We'll, we'll pull our hair out if we're trading a stock or a commodity off of a one-week report, right? So I'm looking at the macro trend. Gotcha, Denny. Thank you. Uh, looking for a Bitcoin rug pull. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's possible if you get that bearish divergence on the indicators and it follows through to the downside. If you if you get a sell-off in equities, I think you're going to get a sell-off in Bitcoin. Why? Margin calls. If the, if the equity market begins to sell off, people are going to sell what they can, even some gold. You have gold ETFs out there. They may be forced to sell that. A lot of people don't want to let go of their losers. They'll hold their losers and sell their winners. So they can keep that that losing position to keep the dream alive. So everything's going to go down if an equity market sell-off occurs. Okay, guys, I think that's it for tonight. Everybody have a, uh, a profitable trading day tomorrow. Thanks for being here. Like, subscribe. You know the deal. And join us on Sunday Night Futures Live. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. And everybody have an awesome night. I'll talk to you soon. Be well.